today's video, we are going to talk about primary health care. During your public health dentistry postings, all of you must have visited the primary health care center camps. Do you remember what and how the work was being done there? Yes, there are vital healthcare services offered that are useful and effective in treating the disease state. The methods used are such that the public accepts them and with the latest technology in use, fast and accurate outcomes are assured. You must have observed that everyone has access to these services. When the community being served participates equally, these programs function more effectively. But to ensure more and more people avail these healthcare services, these services must be made available at a cost which both the community as well as the country can afford. Now, keeping all of these points in mind, let's understand the definition of primary healthcare. As discussed above, it is essential healthcare based on practical, scientifically sound, and socially acceptable methods and technology made universally available to individuals and families in the community through their full participation and at a cost that the community and the country can afford to maintain at every stage of their development in the spirit of self-determination. This concept of primary healthcare came into existence following the joint WHO-UNICEF International Conference at Alma Ata on the 12th of September 1978. Alma Ata called for the acceptance of the WHO goal of health for all by 2000 AD and proclaimed primary healthcare as a way of achieving health for all. We will now look at the characteristics of primary healthcare according to the Alma Ata declaration. As the term implies, we should start by addressing the primary or major health issues to promote health, prevent diseases, and if they have already occurred, provide a remedy. It also involves providing rehabilitative services for people with a disability who have, let's say, lost a limb and hence have lost their jobs. Such people can be given rehabilitation for their current state. Next, to provide these health services, we rely on health workers at the local level. These include physicians, nurses, auxiliaries, as well as trained midwives and community workers. The third characteristic is that of sustaining these services. These should be sustained by an integrated, functional system which is mutually supportive to ensure prioritizing those who are most in need. Lastly, other than the healthcare sector, there are several other sectors like agriculture, animal husbandry, education, etc. Coordinated efforts of all these sectors are necessary to deliver primary healthcare. We will discuss this in more detail in the principles. Primary healthcare also includes certain essential elements. Let's look at this picture and understand better. First, as you can see, it involves a mother who is educated about taking care of her child as well as her health along with also educating her about family planning. Next, it's ensured that proper food supply and clean water are made available for the public alongside ensuring basic sanitation. Lastly, all essential drugs as well as immunizations against infectious diseases must be made available in the primary healthcare center. Now, there are five principles of primary health care and to remember them, let's remember the line. Equal community participation and coordination with adequate technology helps with the prevention of diseases from the definition we studied initially. With the help of this, let's understand these five principles. The word equal can be used to remember the principle of equitable distribution. This basically says that every individual irrespective of whether they are rich or poor, their caste or creed, all have equal rights to access healthcare services. You might have noticed that these services are more commonly used in urban areas than in rural and this is termed as social injustice. For this purpose, plans are being made to shift the gravity to rural areas where healthcare services are needed more. The next principle, as the sentence suggests, is community participation. This basically talks about how all individuals and families of a community need to take part in the welfare programs that are organized. It would be extremely beneficial if the community is involved in the planning, implementation as well as maintenance of health services. In our country, village health guides and trained dais have helped serve this purpose. The term coordination stands for intersectoral coordination. Now, we need to understand that other than the primary healthcare sector, there are several other sectors that are also working under the government. As discussed earlier, these could be the primary sector of agriculture, animal husbandry, food, and so on. 
Now, because of so many sectors being present, there are chances of duplication when a program is being planned and hence to avoid this, it becomes important to make sure the planning of a program is notified to other sectors as well. The next principle, as you would have guessed thinking back to our line, is adequate technology. To provide efficient healthcare services, it is also important to have access to adequate technology. By the term adequate, we not only mean that the technology should be scientifically sound, but also that it's effective along with being easy to understand by both the volunteer as well as the people. This principle is also valid in situations where costly procedures and equipment are used, when cheaper and scientifically acceptable alternatives are available. Lastly, we have the principle of focusing on prevention. We all have heard of the saying prevention is better than cure and it's now important for us to apply this in our practice. Instead of waiting for a patient to present with the disease and then treating them, we should focus on preventing the disease early on. This was all about the basics of primary health care. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.